How come he don't want me, man? You lied to me, to mom, to everybody in this family. Oh, it's not that simple. Don't touch me. Oh. 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 Honeys, you better stock up on those tissues, because one box ain't going to cut it. We're about to take you on an emotional roller coaster with the top six tear jerking moments in black TV history that left us all a hot mess. From the heart wrenching goodbyes to those twists that had us gasping for air, we're diving deep into the scenes that made us sob and showed us that, yup, even in comedy, there's room for a little heartache in real talk. Buckle up, loves, because we're not just revisiting these moments, we're feeling them all over again. These scenes, they're the ones that stuck with us, proving that true art hits you right in the feels. Kicking things off, we're throwing it back to good times and the moment we all felt our hearts drop, the death of James Evans. Talk about a scene that became iconic overnight. Let's dive into this and more, shall we? Damn, damn, damn! Get ready for a story that's as heart-wrenching as it gets. Imagine this, Florida Evans, the resilient matriarch of the Evans family, faces a moment that changes everything. Her husband, James, the cornerstone of their family, has always been there, tirelessly working multiple jobs to keep them afloat amidst the challenges of gangs, drugs, crime, and poverty in their neighborhood. The family had long harbored dreams of leaving the projects behind for a better life. It seemed their dreams were finally on the verge of becoming reality when James moved to Mississippi, secured a job, and called for his family to join him. In anticipation, they threw a farewell party, a celebration of a new beginning, but in a cruel twist of fate. During that very party, they received devastating news through a telegram. James Evans had died in a car accident. Can you imagine the shock, the disbelief, the very foundation of their family, the man who fought against all odds for a better future, suddenly gone? It's a scene that starkly reminds us of the fragility of life and the strength of those left to carry on. What would become of the Evans family now? Elvis! Here's one from Mississippi! <laughs> that must be from James! <laughs> if it's from Mississippi, it's... Have mercy. Right. Open it, Flo. Oh. We regret to inform you that your husband, James Evans, was... Imagine getting that sort of news at a party. It's even more sad to realize that what seemed like the surest way to leave their rough neighborhood was gone like a cloud of smoke. And when you think about it, it just seemed like life never wanted to play things in their favor as every attempt to relocate was simply dead on arrival. In what seems like a similar vein, the next sad scene on our list is when Chief Carl Kaniski dies in Give Me a Break. Also, the glue that seemed to hold his family together doesn't tell us what he dies from, but everyone is dealing with the aftermath of his death in that particular episode. Due to how suddenly it happened, we're left to assume that he died of something like a heart attack. Trying to come to terms with his death Nell also breaks down. Damn! 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 <laughs> the family's foster child, Joey, shared a common passion with the chief for electric trains. After the chief's passing, he sets up the train in the chief's room and excitedly calls for Nell to come see it. Nell is not having this as she scolds him sternly, mostly because she's been in denial over the chief's passing. Julie and Jonathan, the chief's children, also tries to calm her down, but that doesn't work either. It takes the calming influence of Grandpa Kaniski to reach Nell, as he reminds her that the chief would love to be remembered for who he was, and talking about him was the best way to do that. They end up telling funny stories about the chief to remember him. When you think about the fact that the actor in this role really did die, it makes it even more sad. Dolph Sweet died at the age of 64 from cancer, and the decision was made to have the character die with him, so they wrote his death into the script. So the actors are not just dealing with a flip in the script, 
They're also, in reality, mourning the death of their colleague. And that just breaks our hearts. Rest in peace, Mr. Dolph Sweet. Remember the reveal with Dorian being Frank's son and Moesha? Did Moesha just stumble into a family reunion or a soap opera plot twist? Picture this, Moesha, living her best life, thinks Dorian is her cousin, and Frank's just dad doing dad things. But then, bam, her aunt drops a bombshell at dinner. Dorian is actually Frank's son. Talk about a plot twist that makes you spit out your drink. Real talk, could this get any more dramatic? Good for you, Frank. You finally brought your son home. I knew you'd do the right son. Although she tries to cover it up, you really can't cover up that type of error. I, I, I've got so many nephews, I just can't keep them all no, straight. it's all right, Aunt Hattie. It's OK. This isn't how I wanted you to find out. Find out what? Well, what are y'all talking about? I'm not your uncle, Dorian. I'm your father. What? Oh, my god. Everyone in the room is stunned by the reveal, including Moesha's stepmom, Dee, and her brother, Miles. Frank reveals that Dorian was the result of an affair that he had while he was married to Moesha's mom, and they gave him up for adoption to Frank's sister. It is a difficult pill for Moesha to swallow as she's deeply hurt and even feels betrayed that her father had an affair and cheated on her mother. It's also difficult for Dee to accept that her husband could keep something like that from her. The reveal also shook audiences to the core for a number of reasons. The thing is, up until that reveal, Frank was considered an excellent example for fathers, especially in the black community. It all felt so random to reveal Frank as Dorian's father, as Frank was a poster child for what a great dad should be. And this had audiences wondering, why did y'all have to do that to Frank? Outside of all that, it's easy to feel the pain and betrayal felt by Moesha, Miles, Dee, and Dorian. Just imagine finding out that your cousin is actually your brother, or that your uncle is your father, or that your father, who you assume to be the most upright person, had an affair and cheated on your mom. How long were you gonna wait before you told us? Oh, no, Dee, baby, I, I'm just... This is crazy. Uh, Dorian, listen. Mo, I can explain. You, you cheated on mom? Oh, baby, it was a long time ago. No, yes and no. Your mother and I were having trouble. Don't it... try to put this off on no, my No, 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 I'm just saying. Just shut up! I don't even know. That's a whole lot to accidentally unpack. Calvin, you are not going to MacArthur Park tonight. In fact, none of you are going to MacArthur Park tonight. <laughs> Wait a minute. Boy, do not test me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, y'all, brace yourselves, because we're about to dive into another tearjerker moment that had us all saying, wait, what just happened? We're talking about the time Janet Hubert, AKA the OG Aunt Viv, waved goodbye to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Aunt Viv was the queen of the bank's household, Uncle Phil's better half and Will's no-nonsense auntie. She was that strong, fierce, nurturing soul with a career drive that could rival any CEO's ambition. Her presence? Honey, it was as monumental as Uncle Phil's, no cap. But then, out of nowhere, we had to say farewell to the Aunt Viv that had become like family to us. It left us all scratching our heads and wondering, why'd she have to go? Was it just me, or did the Banks family feel a little less complete without her? What went down behind the scenes to make her exit stage left? Grab your tissues, folks, because this drama is just as real off screen as it was on. Somewhere along the line, Janet Huber gets replaced by Daphne Reed for the role of Aunt Viv, and it breaks our hearts. Before we unpack that, let's talk about why she was replaced. The thing is, Janet gets pregnant, and that goes against her contract for the show. But hey, accidents happen, so the pregnancy is worked into the show, but not without a few relationships on set. Hubert is offered a new deal for the new season, which she doesn't accept because it feels unfair, and she has a newborn to consider. Plus, there was tension on the show with cast members. Well, mainly Will Smith. She said that he said that she was difficult to work with. Who would have thought? As a result, the role was recast, and she was replaced with Daphne Reed. Now, here comes the part that makes it feel sad. Daphne's execution of the role is not as fiery as Hubert's, but it's likely to be expected as it appears that Hubert was naturally a feisty one. 
so the role was made for her. As to be expected, they addressed this switcheroo with some humor, choosing to claim that Aunt Viv changed after she had the baby, and the show goes on. You know, Miss Banks, since you had that baby, there's something different about you. <laughs> it sucks to think about how easily a person can be replaced because the show must go on. Our next sad scene would have to be the Bicycle Man episode from Different Strokes. Earlier episodes of the show audaciously address topics like bullying and racism, among other things. Season 5 tackled head-on issues like drug abuse, sexual harassment, and in the Bicycle Man episode, the predatory behavior of child molestation. Arnold and his best friend Dudley become cordial with the owner of a local bicycle store, Mr. Horton, who is weirdly charming, conniving, and equally sinister. He eventually entices the boys with ice cream and pizza and promises a huge reward to get them comfortable. Now here, fellas, here's a little pepperoni pizza. Now this is hot stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, guys, you can just have an awful lot of fun with your clothes off. He even gets them to keep secrets from their parents. The innocent little boys are having a good time, and somehow Horton gets them to take off their shirts and pose for pictures. But only after showing them R-rated cartoons and playing strange games with them, even giving them wine to drink. Look at that girl, Mouse. She's wearing a bikini. Not anymore! Arnold begins to feel weird about the situation and leaves Dudley behind with Mr. Horton, who eventually drugs Dudley. To date, the darkness portrayed in this episode never fails to scare us as well as sadden us. Thankfully, the cops show up and arrest Horton before things go any further. Is this Horton? Yes, it is. I think you've got a big problem, Mr. Horton. Now, where's Dudley? It's heartbreaking to watch for a number of reasons, which might include the uneasiness faced by everyone involved. Even now, it is a painful reminder of the need to protect our little ones and remain ever so watchful for any odd behavior. Something else makes this scene sad. Viewers are denied the pleasure of seeing him receive instant karma in the form of a black eye or something close to that. Speaking about protecting children, on our list of sad scenes on black television is Will's father walking out on him. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. When Will is five years old, his father Lou abandons him and his mother Viola, claiming that he is scared to be a father and he feels trapped. Lou attempts to make a comeback into Will's life after a 14-year absence. Uncle Phil is nowhere near impressed by his presence and can see through Lou's lies, but Will is oblivious to it and is beyond excited to join Lou in activities to help them bond. Eventually, Lou wants to leave again and attempts to get Uncle Phil to inform Will of his departure, but Uncle Phil is pissed and refuses to help him. Lou almost bails without informing Will. What's up? Will, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Some business came up I gotta handle. Our trip on hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, cool. that's cool. Just for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. After Lou leaves, Uncle Phil tries to help Will navigate the emotions he might have. And although Will claims he's not upset, he goes on to rant about Lou's absence. It's all right to be angry. I'm saying, at least he said goodbye this time. Ain't like I'm still five years old, you know? Hey, he wasn't there to teach me how to shoot my first basket, but I learned, didn't I? Great birthdays without him. He never even sent me a damn card. To hell with him! Will. Nah, Will. you know what, Uncle Phil? I'm gonna get through college without him, and I sure as hell don't need him for that, because ain't a damn thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids. Then comes the most heart-wrenching question. How come he don't want me, man? That is not a question that any child should have to ask, and it completely tugs at our heartstrings. The fact that Uncle Phil simply lets him rant and grabs him up in a much-needed bear hug proves that anyone can make babies, but it takes a remarkable man to be a father. By no means is this list exhaustive, so feel free to tell us in the comments what your saddest black TV scenes are. Don't worry. We're grabbing our box of tissues as well.